We've made it to Thanksgiving week. And unfortunately, the number of COVID-19 cases are continuing to rise at alarming rates across the country. I know it's not ideal, but I am urging each of you to do your best to stay in your homes on Thanksgiving Day so that you and your loved ones have a better chance of being alive and well for the remainder of the holidays and into the new year. This virus is very real and very unpredictable as it affects everyone's bodies differently. Find fun, creative ways to connect with your loved ones this year and share those ideas in the comments section. We love to see how you all plan to safely celebrate Thanksgiving 2020. We still have so many reasons to be thankful. things that we're glad about this Thanksgiving is the fact that we are still blessed to be a blessing. Every November, we bring our canned goods to the church in an effort to stock our food pantry, Manor House. But many of you still have no clue how great of an impact you make by bringing those items. Last year, we collected over 20,000 canned goods and that food was able to stock the pantry for over a year. We decided to take a visit to Manor House during their food distribution hours to see some of the work that they're doing. Take a look. We're here at our food pantry Manor House right here in Third Ward. Every year around this time, we collect thousands of pandas to stock these shelves so that people can come by each week and pick up food for their family. Let's take a look. Manor House is located at 3118 Blodgett Street, right behind the Pilgrim Community Center. On any given day, you can drive by and see people in need coming to receive food and other necessary items for their families. The pantry is not just stocked with canned goods. There are other groceries available as well, such as fresh meat and produce. There are also food items available that are ready to eat for people who may be homeless and do not have the proper equipment for cooking. Right now, they are preparing for their weekly deliveries as they deliver to about 150 families since the start of the pandemic. It's a three-day operation. The food is received on Thursdays, packaged on Fridays, and delivered on Saturdays. So if you or your organization would like to donate to Manor House, call 713-529-3381. If there's one thing that everyone has had to learn to do during this season, it is adjust. And I'm glad that the Manor House has been able to do just that while still carrying out its mission. Speaking of adjusting, our annual Thanksgiving feast is tomorrow. Sadly, we won't be able to host the homeless and hungry community the way that we usually do with the beautiful tables, music, and decorations. But volunteers will still be there in the morning with smiling faces as those who are hungry will be able to receive a hot, prepackaged, delicious grab-and-go meal. And to end the Thanksgiving season, something extra special is taking place both on the Avenue and in Alexandria, Virginia. That's right, we're having a joint Thanksgiving worship service with our sister congregation, Alfred Street Baptist Church, where the Reverend Dr. Howard John Wesley is their pastor. You do not want to miss this exciting experience. Tune in Thursday morning at 10 o'clock Central Standard Time, 11 o'clock Eastern Standard Time via Facebook, YouTube, and the websites of both churches. By now, if you've been watching, you know that we've been highlighting black business owners in our church. This week is no different. Back in February, the Financial Empowerment Ministry had the idea of doing Shark Tank on the Avenue. Once everything got shut down, it got put on hold, but they picked up right where they left off, and as of last Saturday, they announced five winners of that competition. Guess what? We were able to get all of them on a call to talk about their businesses and what they've learned. Watch this. Hello, everyone. Um, first of all, congratulations to all five of you for being the winners of the Wheeler Avenue Shark Tank experience. That's super cool. Um, 
our pastor is always talking about our church being intentionally intergenerational. Um, so I'm glad that I'm able to have all of you on here at the same time to get you know your different perspectives on this experience. So this Shark Tank, uh, it took place under the Financial Empowerment Ministry, correct? Nice. So before we get into your individual business ideas, I do want to know what this experience was really like, because many of us have seen the actual show on TV, but a lot of us have not. So um, for those of us who are unfamiliar, can you all take us through what all you had to do? Um, and I want to know everything, all the juicy details. So who's, who's going to go first on that one? Well, I'll start. Um, I am a, a Shark Tank fan, so I've watched the show. Um, but the competition consisted of us, you know, presenting our business plans and submitting those uh, back in, I think, February. And so we submitted our business plans and they were judged and we were selected as finalists. Um, and, you know, if for me, I had had a business plan, but I definitely worked a lot harder to make sure it was, you know, all my T's across and my eyes were dotted to submit it. And then we, we were uh, halted because of the pandemic. And um, I know that was probably, you know, hard for a lot of us because I know we were looking forward to it. But thankfully, the, min the ministry picked back up uh, sometime in the fall, reached back out and asked that we were still interested in competing, and we were. And so we, I guess we all just got back into the mode of preparing and gave a uh, presentation similar to Shark Tank, where we pitched our business to ministry panelists um, and other uh, member business owners within the church. And they gave us great feedback and was able to award us with funding for our businesses. So that's the, the gist of how everything went for us. So was this all done via Zoom? The entire? Wow. Yeah. So what does a business plan look like? Oh, I'll take that one. So in a business plan, you really just want to sell your business and talk about um, why you're starting the business, what problem you plan to solve with your business, and then also some financial projections as well. You want to give your financial projections. It's three to five years. I think I did five years in my business plan. And then also talk about the balance sheet. How are you going to fund the business? Are you going to have cash flow? Is that going to be positive throughout your um, the first few years of your business? So it's really giving the details of your business, who you plan to target, your target mar market, and your target niche and just laying all those out to make sure you have a business that can be profitable. Nice. So Mr. Ahmad, what were you all competing for? What was the grand prize? Um, when I won Shark Tank, I got $1,000. $1,000? Wow. So, okay, we're going we're gonna to get um, into that a little bit later. Um, I do want to hear about everybody's individual businesses so actually i will start with you um ahmad because i know you have the knickknack shack so can you tell us a little bit about what that is and how you plan to use your one thousand dollars so the knickknack shack is a mobile store where you can where you can buy knickknacks for different kinds of events birthday parties parties uh festivals events etc etc and to use the money i would and i mean i use the money to uh get the knickknack shack started started and help my business grow so what have you learned during your process with Shark Tank? I've learned that you have to adjust. Nice. Yeah, because you're you're doing all of this during this pandemic. So I'm sure it, it's it's a lot harder than it probably would have been before. But you seem like you have it all together. So congratulations. So, Miss Corinne, you're next. I know you have Coco's Colorful Confections. Can you tell us about that? Yes, so Coco's Colorful Confections is a business ran by me, and it's where we sell homemade baked goods. For example, we sell cookies and cupcakes and so much more. Mm -hmm. I started my business during the pandemic, and the way I adjust to it was I would go to my customer's door and I would drop off my, like, their cookies or whatever they ordered, 
and then I would send them a text message saying that they got their order. So what kind of confections can we expect from uh, Coco's Colorful Confections? You can expect sugar cookies. That Those are best sellers, and you can get them in any, any color you would like. And we also sell pies, which are sweet potato pies or apple. And we also sell cupcakes and vanilla or chocolate. Fancy. So how are you going to use your prize money? I'm going to use my prize money to buy a kitchen egg mixer bowl. That is, I'm going to use it so I can make two batches of cookies at a time because right now I only have one. I also use my money to buy an embossing rolling pin. That is a, pin, a rolling pin that, that has different prints on it and you can put different prints on cookies. For example, they have reindeers for Christmas and they also have jack-o'-lanterns for Halloween. I would also use my money on a piping tool set so I can do different piping skills on cupcakes. And I would also take piping skills classes. Oh, you are fancy. Nice. Well, I'm excited about that business. So what, what have you learned other than having to adjust? Um, what, what else have you learned through this process? I learned that I need you to adjust the, to the pandemic and, uh, and how to scale my products nice. and as it gets bigger. Cool. Well, thank you so much. Mr. Justin, you have homegrown. Tell us a little bit about that. Yes, ma'am. So I competed in the not so old adult uh, age range category. Um, and my business plan was homegrown. And, and the model is basically to conglomerate uh, and congregate different local black owned businesses, especially vegan restaurants to offer food uh, after church and after our services. So we can help answer the question that everybody probably has on where are we going to go eat? You can stay right here in third ward. We can continue to trade with each other um, and help boost our, our economies and our communities, um, as well as fresh produce um, grown right here in Houston, hence the name Homegrown. Nice, I love that. Um, so you can, that will also be a big help to us during the Daniel Fest whenever we do that again. Yes, ma'am, exactly. That. That's awesome. What have you learned through this process? Uh, similar to, to what Amaz spoke of and what all of us had to deal with was, you know, the pandemic. So. Like they mentioned, when we first applied, you know, there was no sign of the pandemic around and we thought, okay, we'll start these businesses and, and whatnot. Um, and then realize, okay, how are we gonna even conduct our business with the threat of COVID and with social distancing rules and, and trying to tweak things there. Um, that was the biggest thing to just have an open mind and, and be ready to, um, to alter and to react. Okay, so how are you gonna use your grand prize? So the main thing will be getting the proper permits um, with the city of Houston, as well as leasing with the church, um, some space to, to have my business. Cool, cool, cool. So Brittany, Lucy's Place, what's that about? Yes, so Lucy's Place is a dog park with a twist. So everything that people don't like about public dog parks, whether it's um, how dirty it can be at times or how the dogs are unregulated and they may not be vaccinated all of that will be taken care of with lucy's place so just bringing a new option for dog owners to be able to take their dogs to a safe and play, safe place for them to play and and just get some healthy exercise in cool so what have you learned my biggest learning throughout this process uh, along with what everyone has already said, was just about uh, planning and preparation. There was so much that um, I learned while I was going through the Shark Tank process and while I'm working with architects and civic engineers um, in the city, just about how important it is to plan out what you need for your business. Because when you submit things to the city, they are um, very strict on their rules. So just making sure you have everything planned out and um, in order is very important for a business. Nice. And how are you going to use your prize money? I will be using the prize money really to go toward the civic engineers that are helping me with um, space planning so that I can make sure I'm in line with the city ordinances regarding parking spaces for my business. Cool. Thank you so much. Mm -hmm. And it's day, simplicity by day. What's that? Simpli thank you. Simplicity by day is a home organizing business. I specialize in home organization and interior design for working parents, professionals, entrepreneurs. I help inspire um, simple, functional, and just beautifully designed spaces so that people can love the home they live in and feel like they have a little bit more structure, more balance, and more peace in the, with, busy, with their busy families. That's nice. That's something that a lot of people I've seen are, are getting into, not um, 
for business, but just they need that during this pandemic. They're sitting at home with all this time and they yeah. need they, they want to declutter and get their homes together. So that's that's really awesome. Um, what have you learned during this process? You know, I think I definitely learned and I feel like it was confirmed today when I listened to Pastor's message about how, you know, this time just that we spent at home uh, was not in vain. And whatever you whatever you did during this time, it just wasn't in vain. For me, it was, you know, taking a moment to work on my business a little bit more. I had time at home that I wouldn't have had normally time uh, with my family, time to reflect, time to get perspective and a time to just, you know, trust God and continue to walk towards this goal of mine to grow my business. And so that's really what I've learned um, during this time for me and my business. Cool. So how are you going to use your money? I'm going to use it for growth strategies for my business um, around strategic marketing um, and as well as um, content creation, making sure that I have multiple streams of income and scaling my business, as well as um, seamless just client management as well. So just growth strategies to continue to grow and, and serve people. Oh, thank you so much. I'm going to ask you one last question that I also want everybody else to um, answer. But what is it? I know you talked about all of you have talked about what you've learned about business so far. But have you learned anything about yourself um, with this entire Shark Tank situation? Uh, I'll start. Um, I just, I guess, reaffirmed and learned that that you know the possibilities really are limitless. You know, there's no there's no limits to what we can do if you really put your mind to it. So um, that that was one thing that's been encouraging, and that I would say I've learned through this process. I'd say for me, personal development has been something that I focused on throughout the entire pandemic. So um, just really focusing on faith. And like Justin was saying, the possibilities are limitless and just really pushing myself and, and keep going toward my dreams no matter what um, others may say or what other what thoughts may creep into my mind that may be negative towards my goals. For me, uh, it's been to not be afraid to uh, fail forward, you know, just try new things, put myself out there. Um, and just be okay with learning and growing. Even if things don't work out, it's an opportunity to learn a lesson and keep going forward. I'll go. So for me, it was probably working hard and asking for help because I could not do this all on my own. So it's probably asking my parents for help and working hard. That's so good that you're learning that early. I love it. Am I anything? For me, it's probably persistence and ambition. Ooh, nice. Nice. Well, that's great. So one by one, um, I want you all to let everyone watching know um, when and how we can support your business. I know that you said that you've already started, but for some, this may still be a, a business idea. So when and how can we support your business? We need your name, the name of your business, and any contact information, whether that's social media, a website, an email address. Um, I'll start with Day. Okay, so you can visit my website at www.simplicitybyday.com. And I'm also on all the social sites, Pinterest, um, Facebook, Instagram, YouTube channel at Simplicity by Day. And you can always email me at Day, and my name is still D-A-I at simplicitybyday.com. So all of those outlets. Nice, thank you, Corinne. You can contact me by my phone number, which is 713 two five nine zero six seven three and i'm about to make a website and a facebook page okay Amad. the knickknack the knickknack shack will be on instagram facebook and my phone number is eight three two two four five three five fourteen great miss Brittany. I plan on opening Lucy's Place in the early spring, maybe late winter in 2021. But right now I am on Instagram. You can follow us at Lucy's Place HTX. So that's Lucy's L-U-C-Y-S Place HTX. Right, and Justin. Okay, when you come to church, look for us out there. Um, look with your nose as well. Uh, well. We'll be there and come taste and see really how good the Lord is. Uh, you can visit our website at um, www dot homegrown htx.com or feel free to call text me anytime at 678-571-5230 well thank you all so much um, for joining us today and all of those who are watching 
please make sure that you are on the lookout for all of these wonderful businesses so that we can support our church family and ensure their success. Um, I'm so happy for all of you guys and wishing you the best. Thank you for speaking with us today. As we close out the month and get closer to Black Friday, we are going to hear from a special couple in our congregation who is known by many for their stylish looks both inside and outside of the sanctuary. It has been a while since you've seen them here at church, but you've certainly heard one of their voices on the Avenue News. Andre and Brittany Kahn are joining us to talk about their businesses in fashion and real estate. Brittany is the proud owner of Closet Jewels, a boutique with lots of beautiful pieces for the ladies. And Andre is a real estate agent and investor who is also in the fashion business as he has a brand called Classic Fellows. Let's hear from them now. Thank you all so much for being with us this evening. Now, I've followed both of you all on Instagram for about seven or eight years, and I've watched you two grow and, you know, start your businesses and your family. Um, it seems as though the cons are never not busy. So with all that you do, one of the things that has remained consistent throughout all these years has been your sense of style, both individually and collectively. Um, I want to start with you, Andre, because <laughs> you have a brand called Classic Fellows. Um, can you talk a little bit about that? Sure. So, um, well, first off, thank you so much, Adrian, for having us. This mm -hmm. is an absolute blessing. Thank you for of allowing course. us this platform to sort of uh, spread some of the things that we have going on. Uh, so Classic Fellows, and I've never actually, I think I may have shared this with my wife, sort of. Um, whenever I met her, right, she was modeling, she was doing like runway and all these different things. And I was looking at myself, I looked down, I said, boy, <laughs> I had on like cargo pants and like a polo or something like that. You know, it didn't look bad, but it, just, it didn't really look good. <laughs> and I thought to myself, man, I got to step up my game. And uh, so one of my peer mentors, uh, Fola Lawson, took me under his wing and uh, showed me, you know, how to get things fitted a certain way and, you know, where I could find things for cheaper. And I don't know, I kind of, I've always wanted to do that for myself and sort of control the narrative and the message behind the brand. And uh, so that's what Classic Fellows is. It's just an opportunity uh, for men uh, to have a, an outlet for their style and, you know, make little personalized things like this shirt that you can find on <laughs> classicfellows.com. You see that? That's my, my wife, myself, my wife, my son, and my daughter. You can make your own on classicfellows.com. I love you see it. How did that? That's all love it. Is. So what you're saying is your wife helped you step your game up a little bit. Absolutely. Yeah. Nice. She and she and you know what was beautiful about it? She didn't actually say anything. You know, she just kind of was, and I and I Aww. observed, and I was like, oh man, I I got to do something because this this ain't working. You know. Nice. And now he's modeling and doing more. Yeah. Than, than, than what I was doing. <laughs> So something that you know people may also not know about you is that you're into real estate. Can you share a little bit about that? Is this a new venture or have you been in this field for a while? Absolutely. So I actually grew up um, at the son of a real estate investor. Mm -hmm. And I remember hanging sheetrock and make, you know, installing light fixtures and painting and spending countless hours, uh, sometimes unpaid, mm -hmm. right? Uh, working at uh, some of my dad's properties and I thought, man, I'm going to college. I never want to have to do anything like this again. Uh, and then I spent, you know, all of these years uh, in oil and gas and retail and professional services thinking, man, I want to make a career out of this. And what I found was I started gravitating back towards real estate. And ultimately, all I ever really wanted to be was a real estate investor. Wow. Uh, so uh, while I still run a contractor full time, uh, I also am a real estate agent and investor. And uh, my thing is, this is an opportunity for us to help continue to carry on uh, black lineage and black wealth. It's very unfortunate, but there are so many barriers and rules and uh, legal practices put into place just 50 plus years ago uh, that denied our families the opportunity to have that ownership and pass that wealth down. Uh, sad to say, even to this day, about 45% of black people own their homes um, as compared to about 76% of, of white Americans uh, who own their homes. Uh, that number has increased since the pandemic from 40% in the first quarter to 47% in the second quarter. And of course, you know, I, I, don't, I don't just work with black people, <laughs> but <laughs> I'm black, so right? I wanna make sure that we prioritize each other and that we're continuing to help each other grow their wealth and their families. So I do wanna talk about a little bit um, 
how the pandemic ha has caused more people to own homes. I'm hearing that right now um, is the time to buy land and property. I know three people, three families personally who have purchased homes in the last few months. What is it about this pandemic that has made this time a good time to buy? So unfortunately, this is uh, somewhat of a financial reset uh, for the nation. Um, that includes having extremely, extremely low rates, mm -hmm. right? So I want to say FHA right now, what's today, the 21st, is floating around 3%, 2.7% um, uh, in some cases, 2.5, 2.5, all the way down to 2%, depending on how much you would put down on your home. Uh, so just to kind of give you some perspective, when my wife and I built our house in 2014, our interest rate was 425 all right, so that's saving you hundreds and hundreds of dollars each month on your payment and thousands of dollars uh, for the life of your loan. So I would say that's probably why we've seen that increase. And so some of my friends have talked about wanting to start looking into buying homes now. Um, what would you say to a first time buyer? What are some things that we should know going into that process for the first time? I'd say uh, call me. <laughs> first and foremost. No. Uh, so uh, the very first thing I would say is make sure that you get your financial house in order, right? So that is make sure that your student loans are either actively being paid for or they are on complete deferment, right? Uh, make sure that you have a substantial amount saved, usually about 6% of the value of the home that you're looking for. And lastly, make sure that you know that there's no such thing as a unicorn, right? You're never going to find the absolute 100% perfect home, and even if you have to build it, there's going to be some restrictions there. So just to kind of uh, set that perspective. Okay, nice. And finally, how important is it to find a good realtor? Some people, you know, they think they can just go ahead and do it by themselves and search for their homes and everything, and they probably can, but what is the importance of having that person there to help you through that process? Uh, so what most people don't know is that whenever you have a realtor and you're purchasing property, you don't actually pay that realtor, right? So it's a free service for you. So you're not going to save any money uh, from your home. There's mm -hmm. a 6% commission split usually. If there's a listing broker uh, or a listing agent, that agent would just keep the entire 6%. They're not passing those savings down to you. Uh, so one of the most important things to know is that uh, you have an agent that has passion for what they're doing. You'll hear people say, oh, I'm in real estate or I'm a realtor, right? And it's, it's just become this thing that people say and they have no zeal, no knowledge, no experience. They just, you know, they're just kind of winging it or trying and, you know, God bless them for, for doing that. But um, I think it's important that uh, they hook up with someone who knows, you know, what they're doing. Mm -hmm. Now, I want to go back to that style piece. Um, I mentioned you guys' style um, at the beginning of this, but um, you fairly recently, Brittany, you turned that passion for fashion into a business. So how is that going so far? It's going great. Um, Closet Jewels is something that I have wanted for quite some time now. Um, Believe it or not, I used to be a tomboy growing up. Um, what? <laughs> yes, a huge tomboy. Um, but, uh, you know, as I grew older, you know, I got a little more girly and more into fashion and just expressing myself through fashion and accepting, you know, the things that I'm interested in and how I dress. Um, and when I was in college, I was actually an assistant manager at a small boutique in Rice Village. Um, so, you know, there it was a little bit different than the average department store. Um, you, I basically had clients. I had people that came in and was like, okay, Brittany, put together a few outfits for me. So um, that's, of course, where more of my interest grew. And I said, you know, one day I want to have my own boutique. Mm -hmm. And I, I started that two years ago and almost two years ago. And it's, it's been going great. It's, it's exciting. It's fun. It's hard work. Um, but it, it's, it's something great to have outside of you know, my typical day-to-day -day job, being a wife, a mother, a, you know, mother as well, and of course working in human resources. So it's going great, I love it. So can you take us through that process of both starting and managing your boutique? How do you go about picking the perfect outfits and the perfect pieces, the merchandise, the shipping, all of that? Do you have a staff? How does that work? I am a one-woman staff. Wow. <laughs> um, it, when I, finally decided to just go for it. I kind of just zoned out of everything. Um, of course, 
once dinner was made, you know, I made sure my husband and my son were, was good. My After husband, working all day. <laughs> After mm-hmm. working all day, that is correct. I did a lot of research um, just on how to make my boutique unique to what represents me. Um, so from there, I did research with that. Um, and I basically, the reason why I came up with the word Closet Jewels as the name of my boutique um, is something that I wanted as a representative of my closet. I don't have a set style. I, um, I can dress up like this, or I can wear a comfortable outfit with sneakers. I can dress professional. Um, usually people may have one set style and, you, oh, that person would wear that, but I'm, I'm a little bit of a wild mm-hmm. card. So um, that's how I wanted to come up with my boutique. And as far as picking the merchandise, I just kind of go off of something that I feel looks nice, not only just for myself, but others as well, too. And I wanted a unique look. Um, a lot of my pieces, I tried to go away from the trend and more so do unique looks, unique pieces. And then I've, of course, do styling as well too. Um, So that actually worked together because being a a boutique owner, you know, you have to market your items. So my amazing husband has been behind the camera shooting the video footage and- and, uh, Lovely videos, by the way. Thank you, thank (laughs) you, thank you. Yeah, he's, he's amazing, he's amazing. The pictures, everything. Um, so I've been able to basically put, you know, those looks together from one piece, which you guys will see here in a little bit. Um, but yeah, I'm just a one woman show it, it, and it's just fueled by my passion and, um, my passion for it. And I'm actually able to express myself, uh, through that. So love it. Now I know that the boutique is mostly online, but you've also done a few pop-up shops. Um, how important are those face-to-face interactions with your customers? Very important. Um, <laughs> Closet Jewels, honestly, has been the most successful through my pop-up shops. Wow. Yes, yes. Um, online is great, but the pop-up shops are, are the best because I'm actually able to meet people. They can see the face behind the brand. Um, and I'm actually able to help them see how a shirt can come to life, mm-hmm. you know, by giving them different ideas on how to wear it, uh, for example. Um, so unfortunately due the, due to the pandemic and, you know, growing my amazing daughter, Mm -hmm. um, I have not been able to do any pop-up shops, although there have been some across Houston. Um, I've decided to say, stay, uh, stay safe and do everything online, but the pop-up shops are amazing. I love to meet people. As you can see, I have a pretty big personality. Mm -hmm. (laughs) So, um, I think, you know, that's really important when you're running your business is to make those connections because especially when it comes to fashion. Um, some people may not have the confidence in themselves and I'm like the biggest hype woman. <laughs> so um, I, I really enjoy, you know, being able to meet my, my customers. So I miss all my closet jewel boos. I call them <laughs> my boos, but I miss them a lot. But those are, that's the, the most successful piece of closet jewels. And I also do, um, private parties as well. I haven't done one. Um, I've done some for myself, but I do offer that service. Uh, if there's an individual that wants to have a ladies night out at home or something of that nature, you know, you can contact me, um, and I'll be more than happy to, you know, pull a few pieces. And there's a way that, you know, there's a percentage that you can get and get off with that as well. And then I'm also a vendor, any event that an individual may have, whether it be for a company, um, you know, they can reach out to me and I have a nice little setup and <laughs> set up shop. Nice. Right, so speaking of your little mini me on the way, um, any plans to add some baby items for little Bria and her future friends? Um, mm. <laughs> <laughs> this was more strictly for the ladies, not okay. the little ladies. Okay. However, I have thought about it. I have seen some very, very cute mommy and me pieces as I've been looking for my merchandise uh, for my boutique. So I don't know, it may be something in the future. I might have a little model on my hands. Nice. So you know we can't have you here to talk about your business, Closet Jewels, without us being able to see some of those fabulous pieces. So you brought some models with you to show us some of those clothes. And while they're modeling, can you share a little bit about the pieces? Absolutely. My amazing models. Come on 
out models. So this is free. As you can see, she's absolutely beautiful. And she yes. is rocking one of my newest pieces, the Chain Reaction Blouse. As you can see, this is a blouse that can be worn casually. Um, she has a blazer. You can drape it over your shoulders. You can wear this to work, tuck it into a skirt with some heels. As, she, as you see here, she has some skinny jeans with some booty boots for the fall. Tied it up a little bit in the front to give it a little bit more character and paired it with some statement earrings. Um, so this is my chain reaction blouse. This is something that will be hitting the site uh, within the next 24 hours. So I hope everyone Ooh. takes a look at that. But this is my amazing model free and you will see her on my website as well as my social media page, Closet Jewels with a Z. Free, you look amazing, girl. Yes. Thank you. Love it. Free just be posed. Look, sometimes <laughs> free just be looking off into the distance. I'm like, that's a good one, girl. Stay right. <laughs> yes, that's a model. So my next model is also a good friend of mine in my soror, Isis. Yes. She is rocking my asymmetrical blazer. Um, this obviously is one of my favorite pieces. As I mentioned before, we do have a lot of pieces within the, the boutique that allows you to be um, basically versatile and also allows you to have the opportunity to wear something a little different. So uh, this, I picked this piece because it's different. It's a blazer, you can wear it off the shoulder. As you can see, she paired it with some distressed jeans with some printed heels and a statement earring. Uh, something really cute, you can wear it out on the date with your husband or a night out in the town with your girls. Um, you can also put, pair this with some slacks and, and a pair of pumps if you have a, a, a dinner or something going on with your business in the evening. Um, so yeah, this is, and it's very, very comfortable as you can see, <laughs> very comfortable um, and very, very beautiful. And the color is outstanding. Isis, you look gorgeous. Yes, Thank she you. does. And then I'm also wearing yes. a piece. Yes. Oh, this you gonna my, model for us too? <laughs> this is my pretty in pink uh, dress that I have uh, that you can wear in the fall. This is actually a size small. I am eight months pregnant. Um, so this is an oversized dress that can be worn, as you can see, with over the knee boots. You can pair it with a nice fedora hat um, and just have something really cute to wear in the fall. The sleeves are also adjustable um, where you can roll them up and have it as a three quarter length a sleeve as well too. But I also chose this piece not only because it feels amazing, but also to give a little bit more comfort as women, we like to have pieces in our closet that makes us look good and feel good. Um, so with this being oversized, um, it gives you a chance to look beautiful. Again, this can be worn with a, a belt. You can put it with a blazer. There's so many different ways that you can wear this. So had to wear something from my boutique for of you guys Of course, today. of course. <laughs> so Thanksgiving is just two days away. So that means that Christmas is right around the corner yes. and Black Friday. Um, so you don't have to wait until December to get those Christmas gifts, guys. Closet That's Jewels right. is having a sale. Can you tell us a little bit about yes, that? Yes, yes. Black Friday came a little bit early with Closet Jewels. So we are actually currently having a sale right now. If you spend $100, you get 30% off of your entire order. It's an amazing deal. I did a private styling and shopping session with a friend of mine the other day, and um, she had product that was about almost... Of a little over $170 and with the, and probably it was about six or seven pieces that she got mm. um, with the discount, she got all of that for a, a little over a hundred bucks, actually right at a hundred bucks. So wow. nice. really, really good deal. Um, it does end on uh, the Wednesday mm -hmm. and then um, there's going to be another sale for the actual Black Friday. So this is the pre-Black Friday okay. sale. It's been going on right now. Yes, there's more. <laughs> <laughs> there's more. All right, so you heard her, everybody. The sale ends tomorrow. So hop on over to her site as soon as this broadcast ends to support your fellow church member by making a few purchases. Also, if you're looking to purchase properties, please get in contact with Brother Andre Kahn Jr. Can you both let us know how to get in contact with you and your businesses? Sure. So uh, the best way would just be to call me directly. Um, I can maybe leave my phone number in the, okay. And then also <laughs> emails, fine. And that's concompany at gmail.com. Awesome. 
And um, my social media handle for Closet Jewels is Closet Jewels with a Z. Um, and you can find me on Facebook, you can find me on Instagram, um, and um, my website is www.closetjewelswithaz.com. Awesome. Thank you so much for joining us Thank today, you, you and your models. Yes. Beautiful hey, girls. Good job. Okay, y'all. Can we get a shot? Oh, they back there? How long y'all been standing back there? Thank you so much. How long y'all been standing back there? All right. I don't know about you all, but I have enjoyed myself this evening. There's always so much going on around here, even while having to adjust. To all of the entrepreneurs who shared with us this evening, Ahmad Green, Corinne Harris, Justin Patton, Brittany Hill, and Day Smith, as well as Brittany and Andre Khan, thank you so much once again. Let's make sure to support our church family in their business endeavors by shopping with their businesses, sharing their information with others, and praying for them. Thank you for tuning in for another Tuesday on the Avenue. I know I mentioned it earlier, but please, if you can, stay home this Thanksgiving. You just might save a life by doing so. And anytime you find yourself around other people outside of your household, make sure that you wear your mask. Until next time, although we can't be together physically yet, you're still on the avenue.